Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Today's video is probably the most heavily requested topic on this channel for a long time, but not in the usual, oh, this would be a cool thing to talk about way. More of a, you owe us an apology attitude, as if I said some kind of morally reprehensible statement that's offensive enough to warrant an apology video. You know what, might as well kill two birds in one stone. The landscape of Genshin's meta has undergone a drastic upheaval with the inclusion of Dendro's new reactions, affecting many Hydro, Electro, Pyro, and by extension Animal units, given that it can assimilate all three of them. Since version 3 mainly features systems being added, not changed or removed, it basically means those four elements received an indirect buff in some capacity, allowing once underperforming characters like Koching and Toma, or niche playstyles like Shinobu to find their second wind. Likewise, it's also taken already powerful characters like Fischl and Kokomi and made them even stronger. I want to go over the latter in particular because of the change in public perception of her since her debut last year. From her unsuccessful first banner to the gradually increasing her recognition, Kokomi has started out mediocre in the eyes of the majority, but in the span of a year without any balance adjustments to her internal kit, more and more reasons to use her began to surface to where she's now a highly practical inclusion to several team compositions, no small feat on account of Hydro's incredibly stacked roster. For today's video, we'll be diving into a retrospective look on Kokomi, Genshin's most heavily misunderstood character. Before we continue on, I just want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. They're the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads that's 100% open source in case you want to see for yourself. As I'm sure you know by now, VPNs mask your IP address and reroute your internet traffic through proxies and encryptions in order to keep you anonymous from trackers, malicious websites, ads, and surveillance. It's available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and mobile devices like iOS and Android, and to accommodate that, Private Internet Access lets you use one subscription for up to 10 devices at a time, allowing you to access connections from over 83 different countries. Alongside this, they work with all major streaming services, so you have unrestricted access to all your favorite content even if it's blocked in your current location. And it's one of the few VPNs that fully support peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and torrenting. To further incentivize transparency, they have a court-proven no-logs policy so they never record or store user data. If you're someone who cares about online safety and privacy, check out Private Internet Access by using the link in the description below for a discount of 82% and 3 extra months for free. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support in case you have any problems as well. Thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back to it. It's been a long time since my Why No One Plays episode on her, so to give a short recap, Kokomi's initial poor reception was a result of three factors, which may or may not apply to you, but we're talking about the general public, specifically the ones who chose not to pull for her. Reason 1, at the time, the player base's understanding of Genshin's mechanics, the full potential of characters, and various reactions at large was still underdeveloped. Shogun was released three weeks prior to Kokomi, and believe it or not, everyone thought she was bad at first, even though she currently stands as one of the best units of all time, with no caveat or asterisk. The reigning 5 stars at the time were primarily focused on damage output, and by that point, everyone more or less settled on one or two characters to run through just about everything Genshin had to offer. You had Ganyu, Hu, Tao, Shao, Child, Ayaka, and Yula. Despite the bust of transformative reactions following Zhongli's return, the widespread adoption of party compositions didn't start to take off until early to mid-2022. Prior to that, the average player was only really concerned about dealing lots of damage, and any 5-star who didn't explicitly do just that was considered unworthy of Primo Gems. Kokomi's outward theme, consisting of regeneration in a similar fashion to Barbara, gave off the impression that she wouldn't contribute enough to your success to warrant spending money on her. Reason 2, Prevailing Wisdom believed delegating a party slot to a character who's ostensibly only there to heal and deal some hydro damage was a waste of space. Considering everyone had access to a 4-star Hydro support already in the form of Xingqiu, and healing or defense was already taken care of by the likes of Bennett, Zhongli, or others that may have already been invested in such as Jean, Diona, or even Chi Chi, the redundancy in Kokomi's function led to most players writing her off without so much as a second thought. To them, it didn't matter that Kokomi was a healer who could actually deal damage because it made more sense to opt for more damage so as to avoid the need to regen altogether. Though in hindsight, there was some serious double standard going on, as Zhongli was gloriously praised for his shield easy moding the game when Kokomi was able to accomplish the same thing. But since he came first, and carried more public appeal being the Geo Archon and all, those who went after him didn't really think too much about a second easy mode character. Reason 3, adding on to the aforementioned underutilization of characters, the dominant narrative at the time when it came to damage was to gear up a character to have as much individual output as humanly possible, and the universal way everyone sought to accomplish that was through crit rate and crit damage, you know, outside of other ancillary stuff like elemental damage. So, upon finding out it was virtually impossible for Kokomi to critically strike, the knee-jerk reaction was that she would forever be hamstrung by her inability to crit, and therefore it wasn't worth the time or investment because we were still in a damage per screenshot meta at the time. All in all, Kokomi's value as a Hydro unit and character in general has always existed, but only players who were well-read on Genshin's mechanics and numbers could ascertain just how good she really was. 
The average player wasn't in a position to appreciate what she had to offer yet. That's not necessarily her fault either. While I agree that everyone calling Kokomi trash was inflammatory sensationalism, circumstances at the time were actively suppressing her capacity to stand out. Assuming we evaluate her strictly on the basis of her own damage output being a catalyst user, the least enjoyed weapon type possessing hybrid scaling on stats that weren't inherently conducive to DPS like healing bonus and being unable to crit paints a bleak outlook. While it's not unusual for previously bad characters quote unquote to see a resurgence, especially in gacha games, first impressions are lasting impressions. She was always good, it just took a while for everyone to realize it, and there were several pivots through 2022 that made her get a lot more recognition, thus opening up the possibility for more of her potential to be discovered. Sometime after Kokomi's debut, version 2.3 saw the release of Slumbering Court in Seidai Island, an artifact domain that supplied two new artifact sets, the Husk of Opulent Dreams, a defense-oriented set, and the Ocean Hued Clamp set. At first glance, it appeared to be a side grade to Maiden's Beloved, seeing as they both offered a similar two-part set bonus of increased healing. The four-piece bonus was significantly different, however. Upon healing someone in your party, a seed-dyed foam would appear for three seconds, accumulating subsequent healing amounts before exploding to deal damage equal to 90% of the store healing, which I believe is a cap of 27k per bubble. It may not seem very substantial given that it's physical damage, but that extra bit of DPS meant that you wouldn't be taking as bad of a DPS loss either if you were using a healer. Interestingly enough, Ocean Hued Clam Set isn't even Kokomi's best in slot. Well, technically it is, but that's only if you're going for DPS, Kokomi. If you want support, you go for Tenacity of the Millilith. But I'm not gonna go too in-depth on that, I just wanted to establish it before people go well actually in the comments. The introduction of the clamp set was critical for Kokomi by providing her something else altogether, more exposure. When everyone was evaluating who it would be most effective on, units like Chichi and Kokomi naturally came to mind. This caused more players to give her a second thought, which meant there was a higher likelihood that someone or several people will find a place for her to be relevant. Additionally, alongside Kokomi's release, a new enemy type was founded, the Rift Hounds, monsters that are capable of inflicting shield bypassing damage over time, so characters like Zhongli couldn't protect against it. Granted, that wasn't sufficient enough pressure to incentivize players to go after her, but as time went on, more and more systems or things would be added or discovered that were sort of giving players a subtle hint hint nudge nudge towards going after Kokomi. The first major influence that propelled her into relevant status was due in part to information on effective team building being more readily available and distributed to casual players. To reiterate, parties like Soup, Taser, Overvape, and whatnot were present long before Kokomi, but the majority of players didn't care enough to see them as anything more than an alternative strategy. The advent of the Raiden national team and the inclusion of more team support characters bore the idea that there could be more efficient and cost-effective ways to take on Genshin's content. Midway through version 2 is when certain win conditions became household names. Instead of being evaluated on their own or in concert with specific characters, units were now under scrutiny for how well they worked towards achieving a party's win condition. For example, a popular win con would be Chain Freeze, in which you apply Hydro and Cryo as fast and often as you can in order to stun all enemies in a place indefinitely. To achieve this, you would need a sufficient amount of both Hydro and Cryo damage. Conveniently, the Cryo element is chock full of members with off-field pressure. Hydro, on the other hand, can be somewhat tricky. Kokomi's Hydro application is extremely consistent by virtue of her elemental skill as well as dealing Hydro damage innately thanks to being a Catalyst user. That's not to say you can't pull off a freeze with other Hydro units like Shinto, but she's able to compete in terms of Hydro application. Where she really stands out though is that by providing a steady stream of healing to her party, it frees up another slot you would be using to keep your units alive, allowing you to run more damage. My personal favorite chain freeze team is Ayaka, Shunhe, Kazuha, and Shinto, but the one downside to this comp, despite all of its damage, is that I can't really tank a lot of hits. By swapping a Shinto for Kokomi, I do lose out on raw force to some extent, but I can pretty much turn my brain off, and in certain conditions, the absence of a need to avoid enemy attacks can be an indirect increase in damage. The same general concept applies to every other composition you would need Hydro in. Taser is another prime example, with essentially all of your damage being sourced from Electrocharged, Swirl and whatnot. All you need to do is apply Hydro consistently, and once again, Kokomi can handle that with ease, while making you borderline invincible. Even in amplifying reactions like Vaporize, most of the time, the Pyro character is the one procking the reaction, so whoever the Hydro character is just has to apply Hydro and wait to do it again. Once more, it's a tough choice to make since Kokomi has to fight Shinto or Yelan for a spot, but the bottom line is, she has many options. Something to make note of is her versatile wherewithal in meta compositions inadvertently corrected one of the main issues that prevented her from being popular in the first place. Earlier I said that the dominant narrative surrounding damage back in version 1 and the first half of version 2 was that crit was the be all end all. There was this metaphorical arms race to build every unit to stack up all the crit rate and damage they could get. Kokomi's inability to crit was and still is a hindrance for her since it means her damage ceiling won't climb as high as other units, but so many people, including myself, completely forgot the other side of the coin. 
Kokomi's damage floor is quite impressive. Sure, you won't be able to deal crits, but with how she scales off a of max HP and healing bonus, that means her baseline is very consistent. And there's still one other way she can boost her efficiency, Elemental Mastery, albeit only by a small margin. On the subject of EM, it's beginning to acquire a greater market share over the meta now that transformative reactions are on par with amplifying ones. So while crit is still sought after, there's now a viable side grade to it. For Kokomi, this matters a lot. It's obvious that building either crit stat is pointless on her, but that means she's almost as cheap to itemize as Bennett. All you really need on her is HP, energy recharge, and maybe some attack in EM if you get lucky. Point being, she's not as frustrating to gear up. If you're looking to find the perfect balance of efficiency and comfort, Kokomi achieves that for just about any team that mandates a Hydro character, and she has the perfect set of tools and functions to all but ignore the fact that she can't crit. In my Why No One Place episode on her, I thought it was unreasonably cruel to prevent her from being able to crit, as I felt like they overvalued how broken she would be if she could still crit. I'm sure a lot of others felt the same way, but we were looking at what she can accomplish too narrow-mindedly. What she offers is comfort, not just in terms of healing, but also in accessibility. Remember, at the time of her debut, players saw it unnecessary to allocate an entire party slot just for a healer. Genshin has a lot of combinations for units, but only 4 slots. That means there's only so much room for variation if you're focusing on a win condition that needs all 4 characters working towards it. The game's difficulty hasn't spiked all that much, but it's still gone up. At the very least, we're taking a lot more damage than we used to. Players are now in a situation where healing is slowly but surely becoming more of a necessity, but there aren't that many characters who can supply their regeneration while efficiently synergizing with meta-relevant teams. Kokomi is one of the very few exceptions to this. In a way, I think her new reputation can be described as a power corrupt modern-day Zhongli. Don't get me wrong, Zhongli is still awesome, but if he was the face tank Isimo character for versions 1 and the first half of 2, then Kokomi is quickly becoming the face tank Isimo character for the second half of version 2, and especially version 3. The main issue with Zhongli is that for all his defense and crowd control, he's still a Geo character when it comes down to it. The Geo element doesn't contribute a single thing for Taser, Freeze, Vaporize, any and every team composition, so you forfeit an entire slot for their ease of play and have to make do with only 3. Kokomi belongs to the Hydro element, the best individual element in the game. I say individual since the only reason why Animo is so overpowered is because it can assimilate other elements. If it couldn't do that, then Hydro is the de facto best. Everything I said so far was significant enough to make her a very welcome 5 star to spend your hard earned primo gems on, but as if things couldn't get any better for her, she received yet another massive indirect buff, Dendro's Bloom Reaction. By combining Hydro and Dendro together, and then applying either Electro or Pyro, you get Hyper Bloom or Burgeon, two more transformative reactions that can deal serious damage if executed well. The difficulty is that to get either one, it requires a minimum of three separate elements, whereas every reaction up until that point only needed two. Now more than ever, party slot efficiency is of utmost priority, which further accentuates Kokomi's value as she's an easy reliable source of Hydro application who can heal and dish out respectable damage on the side. That opens up more opportunities for you to itemize damage for the other three party members. It's getting progressively more difficult to maximize every character's uptime now that more baselines need to be covered. Historically, I've mentioned that it's usually better to specialize in one field than to be a jack-of-all-trades master of none. And the only way for a jack-of-all-trades to be worth considering is if there are situations where you simply don't have enough space or faculty to have dedicated units for. Or your name is Bennett, who is so overtuned that he covers attack and defense at the same time better than even solo offense or defense characters. Kokomi's stat line isn't as inflated as Bennett, but she's probably the only Hydro unit in the game who's efficient in all Hydro relevant team compositions, and she does that while increasing your margin for error to a near careless degree. The only thing that hasn't really changed for her is that Kokomi is still by and large a jack of all trades. I know I spent 5 minutes explaining why healing is becoming more important, but at the end of the day, we're still not in any mortal danger yet. At best, she's a comfort pick. Her main selling point is that she makes things easier, so fortunately that makes her very appealing for casual players. But for super hardcore endgame players, Kokomi can only do so much for you. I don't think she's better than Shinto or Yelan for instance if we go by pure kill power. In exchange for having possibly the highest floor out of the entire present cast, there are some limitations she can't break through, no matter how hard she tries. Then again, in light of how impressive her resume is at the moment, I don't think she has anything to worry about for a long time. Even if there comes a time where she gets power crept, just like Chung Li, she makes the game so autopilot that a lot of us won't care about the loss of potential of time. Without a doubt, Kokomi has transformed from a 5 star that almost everyone thought was useless to one of the best 5 stars in the game by most players' definitions. So there you have it, if you have any thoughts of your own about Kokomi, then make sure to leave them in the comments down below. For now, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe, consider following me on Twitter at Varsverum, joining my Discord server, and if you want to support me further, check out my Patreon page. By donating, you'll receive benefits for all three of my channels, Vars, Vars2, and Vars3. 
But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.